My name is Tessa Bowes. I'm a social historian and author of Etta Lemon, The Woman Who Saved the Birds. And I got onto this, this trail of this story by chatting to a bird, a friend of mine, who just threw into the conversation, did you know that the RSPB was started by Victorian women campaigning against feathered hats? And I thought, uh, surely not. What an extraordinary story. I mean, we would have heard of it if that were true. I thought I'd better do some digging. And I discovered all sorts of fascinating bird hats, characters, forgotten photographs, letters, and it took me three years to pull the threads of this story together and to bring these women out of the shadows. My heroine, I guess, is Etta Lemon. She was known as the Dragon. She was the woman who built the RSPB. From when her fur fin and feather folk group merged with Emily Williamson's Society for the Protection of Birds in 1891, Etta stepped forward and took up the reins. I think you need women like Etta campaigning for the environment today. She had very thick skin, she was absolutely single focused and her eyes were on passing legislation. The Plumage Act, we're celebrating its centenary this year. 1921 it was passed after a 30 year campaign. Now that really is longevity. These women were very good at networking. They co-opted their friends, their wider circles. They wrote to the press, they gave talks. You know, they didn't have social media. They couldn't even book a meeting hall. But they were not going to take no for an answer. They named and shamed the wearers of what they called murderous millinery, these awful, elaborate bird hats, often with several species at a time piled on top. And they kept on banging their drum when nobody cared about the birds at all. Until the law was passed and the British people were coaxed by these women to fall in love with birds. And we had that legacy with us still today. I'm Andrew Simcock, uh, Chair of the Emily Williamson Statue Campaign, and I'm here to talk about this vote. Emily Williamson founded the RSPB in 1889 at, at her home in the Croft, Didsbury in Manchester. So I'm on a 10-date UK-wide road trip with the four shortlisted designs for the statue of Emily, and I'm here today in Dungeness to ask people of Kent what they think about the four designs. Those are, firstly, one by Billy Bond, which shows Emily with her hat upturned, the hat they campaigned against, uh, so hard in the Victorian and Edwardian period, a hat that is now the bird bath that she's offering back to the birds. Then we have Laurie Desengrimel's design, which is a classic design with a bird on her hand. Clara Batts' design has Emily with her great-great-niece Melissa Bateson and Melissa is a bird scientist at Newcastle University who was totally unaware of the connection between her and Emily. Birds run in their blood. And finally Eve Shepherd's design has birds in the skirt of this contemporary design that's designed to highlight the natural habitat. So I'd like to encourage the people of Kent who visit the RSPB Dungeness Reserve to vote. You have until the end of um, October to register your preference for which of those four shortlisted designs you would like to see turned into a full life statue. To vote you can simply go on to the www.emilywilliamsonstatue.com website. That's Emily Williamson Statue dot com website and you can place your vote there. Hello, my name's Eve Shepherd and I'm a figurative sculptor and I made um, the maquette for um, Emily Williamson sculpture uh, for Didsbury in Manchester. Um, there are four of us that have been shortlisted and I'm one of them. And my inspiration for the piece of work was to kind of to marry together um, the woman uh, because we're obviously very, very lacking in the UK in um, female depictions of females within public work. 
So that was a big draw for me. And the other big draw for me was the conservation aspect of Emily Williamson's work and her legacy, which is the RSPB. And so it was, it was a combination of the great work that she did, her legacy now, and the great work that the RSPB do. So this piece of work is, is speaking predominantly about those two things, female depictions within um, public sculpture and also um, the, the conservation aspect of, of our lives now and how important it is that we get the message out that we need to protect species of, of birds and their habitats. This campaign is not just about a statue because a statue is meaningless without an educational aspect. We want to inspire the next generation of eco-activists, just like Emily. So when the statues come to rest at Manchester Art Gallery between the 1st and the 14th of November, we are holding the first ever Emily Williamson Festival. It will be partly online, partly live events, celebrating female accomplishment in conservation, campaigning, science and storytelling. This is a first. And I'm really excited about reaching out to people, um, young and old, great and small, famous, not famous, who will be telling their stories of what they've achieved in their own backyard and giving people a toolkit to go off and do it yourself and why it's so important right now to fight for nature. I think today is a very good moment to remember their campaign and to remember that one voice can make a difference. And no matter how small or disenfranchised you might feel, you can start something in your own backyard. You can take action for nature. It can be as simple as inviting your friends to tea as Emily Williamson did in Didsbury in 1889 and asking them to sign a pledge to wear no feathers. That is how the RSPB started.